Okay, so keep your back straight and neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. And gently close your eyes and focus your mind to this bell sound, please. So while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. Do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tassa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhassa Homage to the blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So bring your attention to your body, please. And observe head to toes. Yourself and say, so patveva, oh, may I be well and happy. Three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge in this moment with this sitting. May my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment. This is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalations and exhalations. So in the beginning, we're going to relax our body step by step. Following my words, mentally relax your body, please. Relax your head. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyebrows. Relax your eyes. Relax your ears. Relax your nose. Relax your upper lip. Relax your lower lip. Relax your chin. Relax your whole face muscles. Relax your teeth. Relax your tongue. Relax your mouth. Relax your throat. Relax your neck. 
Relax your shoulders. Relax your arms, elbow, forearms, palms, fingers, fingertips. Relax your back muscles and relax your spine. Relax your chest and then relax your abdominal muscles. Relax your lungs. Relax your heart. Relax your liver. Relax your kidneys. Relax your gallbladder. Relax your pancreas. Relax your small intestine. Relax your large intestine. Relax all abdominal organs. Relax your bottom. Relax your thigh. Relax your knee. Relax your calf muscles. Relax your foot and relax your toes. Relax your whole body muscles, tendons, ligaments, bone, bone marrows, and whole skeleton. Release the tension in your mind and keep relax your face muscles. So bring your attention to in front of your nose and your upper lip area. Deeply and gently breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. So allow your inhalations, exhalations happen itself. And when it happens, recognize this is inhalation, this is exhalations. Do nothing extra.
Just simply observe your inhalation and exhalations. So bring a little bit more attention and observe entire continuation of the inhalations, exhalations. And observe entire breath body knowingly. This is the beginning, this is the middle, this is the end of the inhalations and exhalations. Some inhalation may become longer, shorter, heavy, soft, warm, cold. Just recognize the character of the inhalation or exhalation.
Just observe how the inhalation and exhalations happen. It happens as a result of your bodily action. So observe how calming down your body, inhalation happen, calming down your body, exhalations happen. Your body moment by moment arising, existing, and disappearing. It's always burning. And that's why the inhalation exhalations happen. Underneath this body, your mind moment by moment build up desires. That's why your body burning moment by moment. And that's why your inhalation exhalations happen. with your mind, with your body, with your breathing. You always experience only the change. So when the mind change, out of that change, the, your body follow and change. 
Out of that change, your inhalations, exhalations change. So it is this changeable process. Whatever perception come, it cannot be permanent. It also become changeable. Bring your attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe and also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this with clear intention mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Be in Suva, pray low, strong, tall or short, big or small. visible or not visible. Near or far away. Already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will. Wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. to your left side. And to your right side. Downward. and upward. To all six directions at once. Like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest. Wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Say sadhu, 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 sadhu. So dear Dhamma practitioners, there was a young couple and uh, they had a very comfortable, luxurious life. Somehow by the time the husband thought, this life is useless, I want to become a monk. So then one day he went to his wife and asked permission. So the wife told, it's up to you and whatever you like, so you go for it. So then he became a monk. Then a wife married with another man. So then they start to live a happy life. So this monk start to, to practice meditation and go village to village. By the time after a few years, he came back to the same village and start to go in the path, uh, that, uh, digging for food. And then the wife saw, and not only that, the, her husband also, this new husband also saw this monk. And then they afraid. They thought, oh, this man came to our village. Now in case if he come to our house and see this wife again, and he may remind his past and the wife also start to thought, oh, if he start to see me, he will come here and stay. Then my, this new husband, I have to, to struggle with this both and I have to fight with him maybe. So then this is going to become a big problem. So somehow both of them discuss and then found a gangster in that area and told, you know, this monk, it disturbs us. It disturbs our marriage life. So then they told to kill this monk. They gave the order to this gangster. So by then this monk used to practice meditation close by in a, the forest. So by the time one day at night, this gangster with uh, another group of his followers, his gangsters went to this monk and told, so we came to kill you. So the monk asked, I didn't do any wrong and I didn't disturb to any of you. Why you do this? So then the this uh, Thief told this, uh, this is the reason that your previous wife, remember that live in that place and she and her new husband and gave this order and uh, to kill you. So the monk told that I understand their fear. So can you give few more hours by the morning you can kill me. So the, the thief told, thought this monk going to escape. And then this monk told, no, I'm not going to escape. I'm going to do meditation and I need only a few hours. And then by the morning, Early in the morning, before sunrise, you can kill me. So this thief thought about it. You know that uh, whoever going to die, his, that is his last wish. And still even the, the high court also sometimes, they always try to fulfill people's last wish then when they're going to die. So this thief also told, okay then, how you can prove 
that you're not going to escape from us. So this monk told there was a piece of huge piece of rock and told bring it here. And then the monk sat and himself, he dropped that piece of rock to his own legs and chopped it. And then this uh, thief and other, his followers were shocked. And the monks start, monks start to practice meditation. And by early in the morning, he attained to the enlightenment. And then that all the thief and his followers and seeing this and transform themselves to good people and became followers of that monk. And then this Thieves also attain to the enlightenment and then the, by the time the monk passed away. So this story tells us, remember, it doesn't matter who you are, that what you love, even though it brings you the cherished, the pleasant moments, the lovely moments, happiness, comfort. Remember, there is a huge risk. And it is not a negative way of thinking about what we love, that you see clearly and you see through the, the layers and what is underneath. So, even though you love, remember you have a great risk. Why? Because any time it can come against you. It doesn't matter how much you love. So as you know, look at the world, still there are things happen. Still that people do it not because of something else. They do because they love you. So the same thing happened to us also. So what you love, it doesn't matter, physical, material, even our own emotional things, our own ideas can sabotage us. So that is a great danger. But the thing is this, when you able to develop your mind with the Dhamma, Look at that monk, hearing that the, his, his previous wife, that when he was a lay person and during that time, that wife and the new husband and trying to kill. And even that monk didn't have any kind of anger or the hatred or that kind of mindset. So then when you come to, when you develop your mind, what will happen in case something happen in your life journey, you will never go into that side. You will never go into unprofitable way of actions. You always going to the profitable way. You always going towards the right path. That is the beauty of your transformation. So that is why you need to learn the Dharma. Otherwise, we become kind of like dogs. When one dog start to bark, that other dog also start to bark. And then they start to bite. They start to fight each other. So we the same sometimes. When someone else hate us, we also hate back. When somebody angry regarding us, we also become angry regarding them. So that is a very animal behavior. So when you practice the Dharma, remember you will never go into the side. You always going to be with the light. You always going to be with the right path. So that will be your great protection for today, for tomorrow, for your entire samsaric journey. Once your mind, once your consciousness able to to recognize that, 
once you start to take that kind of decisions again and again and again being with the right path remember that going to become the greatest blessing that you can accumulate to your future because then out of you no one going to get hurt and at the same time it going to become the protection for you so otherwise in day to day life we get the protection out of many things but our own behavior our own choice our own action when it become the protection to you that going to become the most strongest and powerful protection so when it come to our ordinary life we always have the, the desires so we cannot we cannot get out of it and uh, it's a, it's called the the defilement it's kind of like the the dna and the atoms that we build up out of the defilement so when it come to that hmm, there are two ways it called vastu kama and klesa kama so it's uh, the vastu kama is kind of like the objective sensuality and the klesa kama is subjective sensuality so you have to understand this both and sometimes we get out of the objective sensuality and we stay away from all these material things and but still we become so comfortable and we become so nourish safe with the subjective sensuality so when it come to your the moment of awareness the clarity or the sati sampajanya or the clear comprehension or one point that the one point notness and when you able to stay with the the moment of experience what happening this both defilements subjective or objective both defilements become powerless so that is why you are the most safe place to keep your mind not with any kind of subjects or objects and being in the moment when you come to the the moment of experience in that very moment what is happening you able to recognize that whatever you experience in a out of both the change when you able to come to that experience that all the this collective nature start to to go away so when it come to this subjective and objective sensuality it is very important to understand because we that the the, the desire or the lust facilitate always with this defilement so when it come to objective defilement that the sensuality the objective sensuality means whatever you see hear smell taste feel from this outside world as perception and the, the subjective reality how you facilitate and how you settle down with your mind there are 10 kind of the subjective that the, the sensuality is klesha kama so the klesha means mental formations so one is greed it is a mental quality it is not a material nothing to do with material the greed is a mental quality remember that so and sometimes even that you become homeless and you become a beggar very poor but the greed going to be there so strong is nothing to do materially become rich or less so that's why you have to remember that maybe we are we we work with the material things in a very nice way you we we become very successful with dealing with material world 
but we don't see that how the subjective sensuality or the, the subjective defilement become a stronger inside us. So if you don't see it yourself, how you can get out of this? Maybe you will get out of this entire world and become alone and maybe you, be, you will be a naked sadhu like in India. And you just, uh, you just live with a very simple life. The materially, you no need anything. But mentally, if your greed is so strong, remember, you are, not, or you are not giving things away. So then you have to remember to reduce the greed. So the greed is a mental quality. So that's why I call this uh, the klesha karma or the subjective sensuality. So then you have to work for that. It is a mental quality. And then you have to develop the mental quality within that, that the, recognizing the generosity and at the same time, seeing the danger of the greed. So that is a wisdom recognizing the danger of the wisdom. So once you remind it again and again and again, what will happen little by little, you will purify yourself mentally. Another one is the head. So that also very dangerous. So that also you have to reduce bringing the opposite side of the mental quality, like loving kindness, compassion, and at the same time, recognizing the danger. This is the very important part. Recognizing the danger of the head. So the recognizing the danger of the greed, why? It can take you to, to any dangerous situation at any time. And even in, by, by the time you're living and after you die, it can take you to the very, very lower existence. And so then why you have to get into that unnecessary risky situation and the head and you should know it is a very dangerous for you, not for others. And the physically, it can make you sick. And at the same time, not only by this lifetime, after you die, if you die with that head, remember, you have no idea where it can take you. And the delusion, the more the more or the not knowingly reasons. So that also a mental quality and that also a subjective sensuality. Maybe you are very generous with the outside world, but you don't develop enough, enough wisdom to, to recognize how things come to be as they are. And especially recognizing the 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 very nature of the, the world and recognizing the truth of the, the world. You don't want to see about it. You earn and then at the same time you enjoy and you find the security yourself and maybe you become generous also. But remember that not, not going to enough for you. So the third subjective, that subjective sensuality is the delusion. And the, the fourth one, conceit, is the mean that uh, is a kind of like the, that yourself, you have uh, the, the fanciful ideas. It's a kind of like egocentric, fanciful ideas, yourself. So, and the, the fifth one, that ditti. So the when it comes to ditti, speculative views, so kind of like the, the self-centered and not only self-centered, that self-centered mix with the, the different, different ignorance ideas. The lot of darkness in that, in that mental view. So that is the that is what here the deity. 
it is just not the the just the mental view it is it is not the kind of like uh, you say oh i have idea it is not like that that the when it come to this ditti this mental view here that the subjective sensuality you bound to it and no matter what you you not going to give up that you love it you hold it to that you bound to it so that is the 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 different in between that the ordinary view and here the speculative view so when it come to this subjective sensuality so always you love it and you become so fascinated about it and you become so that the pleasant about it and you always harboring it holding it protecting it so that is the very nature of the subjective sensuality and the other one is the the doubt the the doubt regarding that that whatever you do so that doubt that you hold and you love it you always keep it inside you and you always harboring to the doubt so whatever happen you 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 bring it as a tool to analyze the world so that is the danger and the other one is the the mental torpor the mental laziness mental sleepiness then you know it's kind of like the 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 he act like the ordinary person but but mentally he's not there he always mentally sleeping mentally lazy maybe physically so strong healthy but mentally so weak and the other thing is that person like that and hold it to it and harboring his mind to that that nature don't want to get out of it just imagine you know you can help to anyone if the if that person need the help otherwise you cannot help so that is the danger with this subjective sensuality because when the person get into this kind of mentality it is very difficult for someone to help for that kind of person so another one is restlessness restlessness is always that cannot uh, stay calm relax comfortable always moving and make making busy himself or herself always make busy and cannot calm down cannot cool down and that person like it even while sleeping that uh, that person moving here and there and uh, so if sit and no one can sit around that person and kicking you know moving hands so doing things throwing things here and there so like that it always busy 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 that person like it so that's why there there are some people they cannot calm down they cannot relax even they just cannot close their eyes they feel depressed so like that another one is that the the shamelessness shamelessness is a kind of like the they don't have any fear regarding wrong things or bad things they always like to break whatever the social ideas or whatever good or bad that the society or the culture tradition they always break it and they always like to to break rules and enjoy it. so once the person attached to that kind of quality 
remember it is very difficult to develop that kind of mind and the 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 tenth one lack of morality or the the unconsciousness so that also kind of like a mental quality and people attach this all the mental qualities people attach and they hold it to it and they get nourished out of it they feel good out of it and people love to be with that and the the thing is when they find that kind of mindset with another person and they also get connect and the beauty is this remember this that as example greedy person and greedy person can connect each other it is okay then you know because he is that person greedy this person greedy they both going to be together it is normal but the danger is this that if you have one of this one of out of this 10 one of this subjective sensuality danger is this you can get connect with any other out of that that you have one maybe other nine out of that nine any other meant subjective sensuality if the if another person you find you become friend you become friend that is the danger so see then in case if you hold it to one there is a more than 100% possibility you have you have that opportunity to attract another subjective sensual person that 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 is a so danger that is the danger why because once you get into that that it you start very easily your mind is start to get that quality as example there is a greedy person and then there is a that the that the mental thought or men, mentally la lazy person so these two people very easily become friends and not only that so you had the greed and then this mental lazy person once it become a friend you get the greediness and then also you very easily you transform to mental lazy person so other person meant that he is mentally lazy and then once he, that person become friend with the greedy person very easily he, that person become a greedy person so like that that out of this 10 any anyone if you find right away somehow is is kind of like the chemistry so if we say you know the body chemistry the this is the mental chemistry that you you get the people each other together so you have to be very careful how about you know greedy person and the ignorance person come together just imagine husband and wife greedy person ignorance person married then what will happen where are you going to end this the same thing when it come to the other side the generous person and the compassion person it's not only for this side that's why you have opportunity also when you hold it to one good quality what will happen that good quality have opportunity to to invite another good quality person to you so then at the same time if you hold it to the dark or the improfitable quality remember that that quality has power to invite another quality so that is the danger so one should know that then you more than the outside because outside world only five things with whatever i ear no stung body that five things whatever that uh, come to as a perception the what happened 
that when it something come to your eye it, it, that the cognizable something come to your eye then what will happen with that cognition you start to feel desirable cherishable and pleasant lovely and then you attach and whatever come to your ear as perception if it is cognizable then what that's mean you know with your eye the, the sound why the cognizable should be because as you know for as human being there is a limit that we can see there is a that the limit we can hear the so like that beyond that we cannot so then even though it, it there is a sound exist but it it has no power to bring uh, the kind of like create the cognize so that's why it should be cognizable so it should be the the, the right range and then when never come to your ear as sound and then what will happen it bring the desire it cherish you plus it feel pleasant and lovely and then you hold it to that so that is the objective sensuality that is the very nature of the obje objective sensuality so that the, as a smell something come to you and if it is cognizable and out of that cognition what will happen if you if the desire arise and if it is cherishable and the pleasant and lovely and then you hold it to that and then the with the taste also the same if it is cognizable otherwise when there is a, if you don't feel that as a taste then it 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 disappear it not going to be your objective sensuality so it if it is cognizable what will happen then it going to to bring the the desire and the cherish and the pleasant and the lovely so then it it you hold it to that feeling also the same there are many feelings but that feeling may be not a strong to bring, co cognize inside so there are some feelings it is strong enough to cognize so if it is cognizable otherwise the, the not the feeling so that's why see how here the buddha very clearly explain it should be cognizable so then whatever the feelings come if it is cognizable out of that feeling if it is desirable and the cherishable and the pleasant and it bring the love that become objective sensuality so then that five if it is cognizable out of your eye ear nose tongue body cognizable and out of that cognition out of that cognition if it is uh, the desirable and cherishable and pleasant lovely and then it going to become objective sensuality so this five also interconnected and it's a uh, when this this all these five things match each other and the, it's a, in in a, in a physical way we call it the flow you know when somebody dance with that dancing that you see and at the same time if the music go nice and if that both match and then the the smell and the the around the environment this everything and maybe the food then and then you say oh that party was so good it is so pleasant lovely so like that whatever you say lovely out of the 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 outside experience so that is the objective sensuality get out of it is very easy long long before the buddha people used to get out of that in a certain way being disciplined we can get out of it but remember that the subjective sensuality it is by mindfully you have to get out of it 
seeing yourself get out of it that is more and more and blissful higher than this outside that the objective sensuality but in the world we mostly appreciate and we were mostly worship and we mostly practice this objective sensuality getting out of the objective sensuality but to purify yourself you have to practice with the subjective sensuality also remember that subjective sensuality not only five there are 10 all the mental qualities or the defilements and not only that if you have one thing there is a possibility that it going to invite the all other nine around you so in day to day life and put some attention that is the best way put some attention to yourself and whenever you have opportunity and try to develop the opposite side of that subjective sensuality and try to develop the the good things in your heart as much as you can start with the little things so that little practice and even becoming generous and practicing loving kindness and even developing the mental effort so that even that little things will help for you so that little help that you start yourself going to go with you and that is going to be the help for you that going to be the help in case when something else from the the negative things once start to come towards you that whatever you practice even it is a little thing you can hold it to that you can harbor it to it you can depend on it you can put the trust on it so that going to become your protection look at that monk even that his previous wife and that the husband and start to to come and kill and his mind he never had any kind of the anger and what he did he start to practice meditation and out of that practice what happened even that thief and all other transform how this happened see this remember that's why when you develop one good quality it is start to transform to others the same thing happened when you have the anger remember it is just not only you and you become kind of like uh, that the signal tower it is start to go everywhere around you so kind of like the telephone signal towers you know the internet towers that you see only one tower cover entire area same like so don't become kind of like uh, that person for your anger, hatred, jealousy, slow tenth of it. So this kind of mental defilement. Don't be a human tower. Wherever you go, everybody become angry. Wherever you go, everybody become greedy. No. Be a tower yourself with the loving kindness, generosity, compassion, with the good thoughts wherever you go help others to transform to good you can do that how you can do that and start to practice little bit inside you mindfully keep it always in your mind and get help out of it when when other people make you angry when you feel sad sorry worry and slowly get into that thought and develop it inside you and then you will see day by day day by day the mindset going to become strong and when you become in strong and unshakable and there is a way other people start to transform around you so with that i bless upon everyone with this good practice may all of you be well happy and peaceful 
may no harm come to you, may no difficulties come to you, may no problems come to you. May you also have the patience, courage, understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life. During this time period, may everyone stay healthy and safe. And finally, may all of you attain supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sabbit yo vajjantu sabbaro go vinasutu ma te bhavatantara yo suki diga yuko bhava. Ittavata cha ammi hi sampadam punya sampadam. Sabbe deva numodantu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe bhuta numodantu. Sabba sampati siddhya sabbe satta numodantu sabba sampati siddhya idammi punya kammam. Asavakkaya vahanghotu sabba dukkha pamunchatu.